Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this first uh, episode, I would say the first uh, part of uh, digestive disease talk with uh, so many of you who are keen to know more and more about uh, this elusive symptoms. I would like to welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen, from within the city, this nation, the rest of the world. And uh, over the next uh, 30 minutes, I'm going to take uh, some of the questions which has been posted some, by some of our visitors of our, of our Facebook page, uh, World Gastroenterology Institute. And I will address uh, some of the questions because it's impossible to address all because we had an overwhelming response uh, with so many questions from uh, across the globe. Uh, a little brief about what, why we are doing this and from where we are doing this. I would like to, I'm sure those who have uh, posted question has done some research on what WGI is all about. WGI is the only dedicated gastroenterology hospital, World Gastroenterology Institute Hospital in Mumbai at Andheri, which is only dedicated for a subspecialty called clinical gastroenterology, hepatology, minimally invasive surgery, and endoscopy, along with specialized care in coloproctology. In other words, what does this digestive system comprise of? So if you ask me, I will show you a quick picture here for the audience today. This is the digestive system. We are looking essentially at the food pipe. Then we are looking at the stomach. Then we are looking at the small intestine. We are looking at the large intestine. We are looking at the liver. And this is the gallbladder. And this is the pancreas. This entire digestive system is an orchestra of seven organs. And what happens here is that, like any orchestra, if one of the instruments is not playing well, there is no rhythm. Therefore, it's important for us to keep the entire orchestra of digestive system in order to get the best rhythm out of it. Today, we, in the first part, are going to talk exclusively about, I'm going to talk about only three areas. And those three areas are the foot pipe, the esophagus, the stomach, and the small intestine. This particular organs can lead to many symptoms and some of the most common symptoms acidity as we term. Every day I get patients who say, Sir, bahut saal se acidity hai. We have in India especially, we have started to live with acidity, it looks like, like so many other evils of society. We think yeah, acidity is an integral part of our life. I don't agree with that. Viewers, I would like to tell you something that human body or any living organism for that fact has tremendous intelligence. So, if something is wrong somewhere, the body will try and tell you certain things in a subtle way. And those subtle ways are symptoms. Say, for instance, uh, if you have, as for instance, we take a question of acidity. I have one lady who asked me a question, uh, Fatima Rampurwala. Good evening, if you are live. You asked me how to combat hyperacidity with ulcers. Now this hyperacidity, acidity is not a disease. 
I want all of you to understand first of all. If I tell you fever is a disease, you will say no, fever is a symptom. Cough is a disease. No, cough is just a symptom. Similarly, acidity is a symptom. We need to find out what is the cause of symptom. The underlying problem of the symptom is the reason why you are suffering from so-called acidity. That's where we need to focus our energy. Your question, hyperacidity, personally I would say it's a very loose terminology lots of people are using in day-to-day -day life. So if you have symptoms which are suggestive of, I'll tell you, after eating food you feel full, you have burning in your chest or burning in upper abdomen or excessive burping. These are the symptoms which probably you term as acidity or some patients also tell me sour fluid coming in their mouth in the morning. Some feel like vomiting, some feel like having nausea and all these symptoms are pertaining to what we call is as acidity. So how to combat this hyperacidity and ulcers with ulcers? Now, how do you diagnose ulcers? You cannot diagnose ulcers on CT scan or sonography or X-ray. Sometimes if there is a very large ulcer, you can possibly diagnose on a barium study. But gone are those days in all leading centers in the world. Nobody does a barium study for upper abdominal symptoms. I want all of you to understand that. So it is like if I have a problem in the stomach or in the foot pipe, what is the best way to look in? The best way to look in is doing endoscopy. Now what is endoscopy? Endoscopy means endo and scopy. Endo means inside, scopy means to see. So once you do endoscopy, you have all the information you need regarding the foot pipe, the stomach, and the small intestine, those organs which I suggested and showed you earlier. So if there is any changes, suppose there is inflammation or small ulceration or some tumor or abnormality you see in this area, you can immediately identify that and then you can treat accordingly. So coming to your question, uh, Fatima, how do I combat hyperacidity with ulcers? So first of all, you need to diagnose that you have ulcer. And how do you diagnose? With endoscopy. It's a two minute procedure. Now I just had a patient who came all the way from Banaras today and uh, he was advised endoscopy at various places in Mumbai as well as in Banaras and he was extremely scared of endoscopy. I can understand the anxiety in patient's mind, but let me tell you, endoscopy at WGI is an absolutely painless procedure. We at WGI, we always administer a little sedation. We give a little uh, injection where patient sleeps peacefully for five, 10 minutes. The procedure is over in five to 10 minutes and absolutely there is no pain, no discomfort whatsoever. Patient wakes up in about 15 minutes, half an hour. We ask the patient, how bad was it? And patient will tell you, believe me, always say, when are you going to start Dr. Rathor? So this is what, how effective and safe and comfortable endoscopy can be. So first of all, I want all of you in the audience, uh, those who are viewing this program this evening, to take out that fear from your mind that endoscopy is painful and discomforting. Yes. If you do not take proper sedation, it can cause some discomfort. So my request to you is if you're planning endoscopy, insist on sedation to your doctor. Once you diagnose ulcer, now ulcers in the stomach and ulcers in the small intestine have different implications. Ulcers in the stomach, elderly patient, 
you need to take a biopsy because ulcer in the stomach can be malignant, especially in the stomach. Now I'm talking of stomach. For instance, this part. I'm talking of this stomach part. When I say intestine, I'm talking of this part, the duodenum. You understand? So when you have ulcer in the duodenum here, it is essentially because of a bacteria called H. pylori in your upper gastrointestinal tract. So H. pylori bacteria leads to ulcer formation. And this amazing invention was done by uh, Professor Marshall from Australia. And he won the Nobel Prize for Medicine for this invention. And he identified uh, almost 25, 30 years ago that this bacteria is responsible for causing ulcer in the duodenum or in the stomach. So how would an ulcer on endoscopy would appear? I'm going to show you an image of an ulcer. This is intestine and you can see a huge ulcer here, like a crater. So when you see a volcano, you see a volcano crater is the ulcer. Now this kind of endoscopic magnification, we call it narrowband imaging. You can see here, this is narrowband imaging. So when you do high definition endoscopy like this, even the smallest ulcer we can pick up very effectively. So how would you treat this patient? This patient ulcer will require H. pylori bacteria eradication essentially. Number, one. Number two, suppose you don't treat this patient, what will happen? I'll tell you what will happen. This ulcer will bleed. This particular ulcer which you are seeing here will bleed. From here, from the center, there is an artery and it gives way. Now, those who are in the habit of taking multiple drugs, those who are in the habit of taking painkillers, they should be extremely careful of not to take painkillers because one painkiller medicine, if you have an ulcer like this, can erode the superficial layer and you can have massive bleeding where you can probably vomit half a liter of blood when you're vomitous. So you need to be very careful. So ulcer, once you diagnose, if it's in the duodenum or even superficial ulcers in the stomach, we always take a biopsy from the stomach. And then we give treatment for H. pylori bacteria eradication. And there is a regime to it. So we feel that how to diagnose H. pylori. H. pylori can be detected in your stool. It can be detected in your, in, in your serum and it can be detected on urea breath test. But the best way to diagnose is to take a biopsy endoscopically because it has the highest sensitivity and specificity for diagnosis of H. pylori infection. Having said that, what kind of ulcers it can lead in the stomach? And I'm gonna show you something. This is how a stomach looks like. Can you see how red is? These are all superficial ulcers and inflammation in the stomach. The entire stomach is on fire. This is what I see when patient has severe acidity or they say very severe acidity, lot of problems, we are bloating, the pain in the back, the upper abdominal fullness after eating. This kind of stomach is seen in a lot of them. So ladies and gentlemen, please do not ignore your symptoms. This is my personal request to all of you. So. Coming to your answer, uh, Fatima, if there is ulcer and acidity, you need to find out the cause of your acidity and find out where the ulcer is, take a biopsy and treat accordingly. And you can completely get cured with the ulcers of the upper GI tract. I want to take a very interesting question of, uh, of one of our uh, personnel who is on the line just now. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Sharma is asking, can symptoms of acidity be wrongly diagnosed for some other ailment and vice versa? Uh, let me tell you something. Any disease, when it is very small, will cause small symptoms. There is no rocket science. Huh? It's simple. Small problem, you'll have small symptoms. As the problem grows big, then you start feeling more enhanced symptoms or amplified symptoms. 